What's up everybody, Ryan here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about how the United States would fight World War III. And as the saying goes, it's better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener during the war. And this sums up the US's position when it comes to fighting World War III with nuclear weapons. It's essentially about dissuading the enemy from ever wanting to fight at all by showing them that overwhelming force will fall upon them should they challenge the US to a nuclear volley. Stay to the very end of this video to hear some surprising facts of how it would actually play out. Let's dive in. So there's going to be three ways that the U.S. fights a nuclear war. The first one is going to be a land-based option with intercontinental ballistic missiles. The second one is going to be a sea-based option with sea-launched ballistic missiles. And the third option will be an air option where strategic bombers will take off carrying nuclear weapons and deliver their payload at the request of the President of the United States. And this makes up the three branches of what is known as the United States' nuclear triad. The fourth option would be to send in Maverick in his SR-72 going Mach 23 and just put on an air show. Hey guys, knock it off down there. Let's talk about these land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles and the strategic network that makes up this branch of the nuclear triad. There's more than 10,000 people and they provide up to 400 on-alert combat-ready LGM-30G Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs. They provide these in hardened silos across five different states. And this is made up of three different Air Force bases. The 90th Missile Wing is F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming the second one is the 91st Missile Wing in Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota. The third is the 341st Missile Wing at Maelstrom Air Force Base, Montana. And the goal of this leg of the nuclear triad is to complicate enemy attack and be capable of providing prompt, overwhelming response to a nuclear attack from an adversary. 400 Minuteman III missiles make up this leg of the nuclear triad, which is the most responsive leg. America's ICBM force has remained on continuous around-the-clock alert since 1959. The ground-based strategic deterrent program will begin the replacement of the Minuteman III and modernization of the 450 ICBM launch facilities by 2029. These missiles are dispersed in hardened silos to protect them against enemy attack and they're connected to an underground launch control center with two Air Force officers on alert at all times through a system of hardened cables. Launch crews consisting of these two officers perform around the clock alerts in the launch control center. The rigidity of the strategic construction and placement of ICBMs is second to none. And this is why China flew their spy balloon over the USA because they're in a major reconstruction of their ICBM land-based fleet and they wanted to copy the layout of the United States' silos and missile bases. The range of each of these 400 ballistic missiles is over 6,000 miles. They can reach speeds of 15,000 miles per hour or Mach 23. They have a ceiling of 700 miles above the Earth. The disadvantage is that their locations are known widely by any adversary that the U.S. might face, and all 400 of these missiles can be taken out by strategic targeting other intercontinental ballistic missiles from the adversary. The U.S. president would be put in a precarious position where they would have to respond within 15 minutes to any enemy attack or risk losing all 400 of these intercontinental ballistic missiles because the enemy will be targeting these during their first volley. And another disadvantage is once one of these missiles leaves its silo, there's no taking it back. It's kind of like saying the F word in front of your mom. And in the rare case that all of the control centers are taken out with the two Air Force officers, there's an additional option to launch all 400 of these missiles from an airborne control center. Today, at least one E-6B Looking Glass Airborne Command Post is on alert around the clock performing the Air Launch Control Center mission. It is postured with full U.S. STRATCOM battle staff and a crew on board to perform what's called the Looking Glass mission in the event that U.S. STRATCOM Global Operations Center is incapacitated. The aircraft can take off extremely quickly to avoid any threat, and the crew on board still provides a survivable launch capability for the 400 ICBMs located across the three missile wings. It's manned with a missile launch crew just as the control centers on the ground would be, and these are capable with communications with the president and launching all 400 of these weapons within 15 minutes of direction of the president. 
The second leg of the US's nuclear triad is a sea-based option, and these are called sea-launched ballistic missiles. Ballistic missile submarines or boomers are undetectable platforms for submarine-launched missiles. They are on constant patrol with enough firepower to make just one boomer submarine the sixth most powerful nuclear power in the entire world. 14 Ohio-class subs make up the most survivable leg of the nuclear triad. Their stealth design makes finding one of these submarines an almost impossible task, giving pause to potential adversaries. Each of the 14 Ohio-class nuclear submarines can carry up to 20 submarine-launched ballistic missiles with multiple independently targeted warheads. The ballistic missile submarine's strategic weapon is the Trident II D-5 missile. Each Trident II has five warheads that reach up to 18,000 miles per hour. They have a special reentry vehicle that's actually built onto the warhead, and each of the five warheads can target independent targets as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. And each Trident II missile is the strongest of any missile in the nuclear triad, with each missile having 155 times the impact force of the missiles dropped on Japan. And I know you're expecting me to do some joke about, hey, what's long, hard, and full of Navy sailors, but there's no chance I'm doing that joke. The advantages of the sea-based option are that there are over 1,000 warheads on the different submarines that are patrolling the ocean at all times. Ballistic missile subs are also essentially undetectable by the adversary. And this allows for the US to respond even if there is a surprise attack that limits its air and land-based responses. The disadvantages. Yeah, this is one of those times when there are none. So if the nuclear ballistic submarine were in a job interview, they'd ask, what are your weaknesses? And they would simply reply, my only weakness is that I'm perfect and that I'm perfect to take your job. At which point the employer would gladly hand their job over to these ballistic subs. The third and perhaps my favorite leg of the nuclear triad is the air-based option. It consists of 46 nuclear capable B-52 stratofortresses and 20 B-2 Spirit aircraft. The US's bomber fleet is the most flexible leg of the triad and it's capable of providing massive firepower in a short time anywhere on the globe, even through the most advanced defenses. The 46 B-52s are located between Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota and Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana. The 20 B-2s are located at one sole location at Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri. And an interesting fact is that each B-2 costs a reported $2 billion. The B-52 is a long-range heavy bomber that can perform a variety of missions. It can carry nuclear or precision-guided conventional weapons with worldwide precision navigation. It can carry up to 20 AGM-86 air-launched nuclear cruise missiles. Each of these air-launched cruise missiles, dubbed the Skinny Wingman, can travel autonomously 1,500 miles from its launch point at almost 600 miles per hour. Each of these wingmen have a destructive power 21 times the force of the bombs dropped on Japan. The B-2 Spirit is a multi-role stealth bomber capable of delivering both conventional and nuclear weapons. The B-21 Raider will first supplement, then eventually replace the B-2 beginning in the mid-2020s. One B-2 can carry up to 16 nuclear high-fidelity guided bombs. Each bomb packs 150 times the power of the bombs dropped on Japan. The B-2 is unique in that it routinely flies round-trip combat missions from its base in Missouri. There are 300 nuclear weapons spread between the three bomber bases in the United States and over 100 strategic nuclear weapons that can be loaded onto bombers scattered throughout NATO air bases in Europe. The advantage of the air option is that they can be called back by the president should the nuclear attack be a false alarm. And beyond that, it would be difficult to detect and target the small air-launched cruise missiles launched from the B-52, and the B-2 is essentially invisible to the enemy's radar. The disadvantage would be response time of multiple bombers being able to be on time on target, and also these bombers could be taken out prior to takeoff. This is how the nuclear war would actually play out. America's priority is to target nuclear capability with their warheads. A single integrated operational plan is the old term for this strategy. The new term for the strategy is called an O-plan or operational plan. The plan mainly focuses on Russia, China, and North Korea. Operational attack focus one focuses on Russia since this is deemed to be the biggest threat and most likely scenario to the United States. And this would include an attack of almost 1,300 nuclear weapons from the United States' nuclear triad on strategic positions throughout Russia. These targets would focus on Russian submarine bases, bomber bases, intercontinental ballistic missiles, and command and control structure. 
Lastly, they would also target civilian population centers throughout Russia. Be on the lookout, guys, for the next video where I talk about the United States' operational plan, nuclear weapons strategy, going up against China and North Korea. Additionally, I'll have another video coming out about a response to a tactical battlefield nuke being deployed by Russia in Ukraine. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Bodenheimer, NEO. Thanks so much for watching this video. Really appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love for you to check out another video that'll pop up right over here. We'll see you on that next video. Most of all, have a great day.